Good afternoon. Welcome to our channel. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the 308 and whether or not it's time for it to retire. Has it gotten too old and slow to no longer be able to compete with all these modern new Fandangle new cartridges that are out there? This year, while deer hunting, I kind of was faced with that question. I was hunting more in an open area with open fields and I have several other calibers to choose from so automatically I chose one that just notoriously has long range and but I kind of came to the occasion that I felt like I wanted to carry the 308 since I have one 308 it's a nice little gun it's a little Ruger um, International and it's just a joy to carry in a short 16 inch barrel nice little gun but I always felt in the back of my mind is that 308 fairly limited. So I went and ran some numbers and I came back with some results that were kind of a bit, uh, I found them quite uh, telling. Before we get totally into the numbers and ballistics and energy and drop and inches and all that stuff, I was just, uh, I put up a, an interesting poll to kind of get a bit of a clearer understanding of what what a deer rifle in our area really requires so what I did is I put up a post and I said if you harvested a deer this year what distance in yards was the shot and I had a whole bunch of uh, uh, different responses and to that and what I had is I had 0 to 50 50 to 100 100 to 200 200 to 300 and 300 to 500 or uh, oh I got lost in the numbers already 200 to 300 300 to 400 and 400 yards plus and I was kind of actually surprised at that the results of them so I had about 700 responses and votes for this little short little poll Zero to, five, 0 to 50 yards, there was 404 votes. And that was 68% of the, the, uh, the total. From 50 to 100, we had 108 votes. So 16, 18% rather. 100 to 200 had 50 votes, so 8%. 200 to 300 had 19 votes now we're down to only 3 percent and then 300 to 400 yards 6 votes or 6 submissions and that's 1 percent and then 400 plus yards we had 3 3 um, responses and it came to less than 1 percent so interestingly, it was kind of surprised me. I was a bit, I sort of figured that more longer range shots were taking place. And I kind of had been led to believe, I guess, in my, my own experiences that, that if you're looking for a new caliber deer rifle, you want a rifle that was good to take those common 300 yard shots but as we've seen from that poll a goodly portion of them were taken under 200 yards many under 150 yards and that was uh, quite surprising to me so sometimes we kind of get all caught up in ballistics as we uh, are a little bit a bit of a gun nut and you think about the fastest and the flattest and the best BC's and and a lot of that doesn't overly matter in from what that poll revealed in many of those ranges that those deer were being harvested and those were deer that were harvested this year or last year rather real world is results now obviously there will be areas where or states or provinces that that those skews those results will be skewed to a little more longer ranges but we have a pretty good mix of stuff around here we have close bush we have big open egg fields in our southern portion of our province of Ontario. So it really showed a great big broad 
diversity of, of results. So, into the numbers of the 308. So, what we have here is a 308 cartridge, a 165 grain SST, a 130 grain TTSX, a 270, and a 264 Win Mag. So I ran the numbers on the on these and I'll just throw them up. The this 165 grain based on Hodgson reloading, it came in at 2600 feet per second and a ballistic coefficiency of 447. Now I tried to pick a mid range um, feet per second. I didn't want to assume that people felt comfortable to load their guns right to the max or even my gun with its shorter 16 inch barrel has different results. So, as you can see, 300 yards on the 165 grain, 13.2 inches of, of drop. And that's with a zero at 150 yards. So then, just for fun, I made up a load, this 130 grain TTSX going on to Barnes website and getting some results on those. We then, I was surprised to see actually how much increase on feet per second there was. It's up to 31 feet per second. And the drop at 300 yards on this 130 grain TTSX is 9.35 with its being zeroed at 150 yards. So that's only about that much and the difference between the two is only roughly about four inches which is about that much difference slightly longer than this bullet of the 270 many of those shots are within a reason um, the ranges that we've seen in that pole it would have taken everything without any problems you can sort of see when comparing the two charts between the 130 grain and the 165 that it really starts to pull away after the 300 yard ranges. So 400 yards, there's almost a 10 inch drift, 10 inch drop difference, and at 500 yards, there's about a 15 inch or a bit more 16 inch drop difference in the favor of the lighter 130 bullet. But those distances are almost unrealistic. Not too many people are going to be harvesting animals. As you can see on the energy column, we're at a thousand uh, foot-pounds. So right around that um, bare minimum foot-pounds of energy at those ranges at 500 yards. But I think as we see in that pole, those, sh those shots are extremely rare and would require great amounts of practice and technology and range finders and understanding wind drift and because as you can see in those charts the wind drift starts to become more of an unpredictable factor so much beyond 300 yards things are getting pretty interesting with the wind drift at a 20 mile an hour wind out of 90 degrees so how does the 308 though compare to something that we would automatically assume as a longer range, more modern, better uh, uh, downrange performances and we have a 270, been a staple forever and we have what many consider a speed demon barrel burning 264 wind mag that is supposed to be some magical wind drop def uh, defying mystical bullet. So I pulled up a 140 grain 270 um, I just uh, and I got the reloading data from Hodgson there. I'll try and put it up here. So at muzzle we have 29 100 feet per second 140 grain bullet. A good high BC bullet 540 which is way better than the 130 TTSX, which is only 350, 
and now let's look at the numbers. 300 yards, we have 9.74 inches of drop with the 270. With the 130 grain TTSX and the 308, 9.35. It's in fact less drop than the 270 with a much better ballistic coefficiency bullet with supposedly the grand reputation of long-range um, accuracy and uh, flight. So that was quite interesting that maybe after all this lowly 308 that has been around for 70 some years, well, maybe it's not time to retire it after all. Sometimes we can get a little caught up in the numbers and the new the fan on the block, the 6.5 Creedmoor, the 226 Nosler, the 28 Nosler, the 6.5 PRC, the 7 mil PRC, there's so many that are coming out. But then you stop and you run a few simple numbers and you got the 308 that's been around since 1952, they say, and it's doing just as good. So sometimes we can get kind of caught up in in those things and maybe it's just time to take a little look and look at the numbers and see how they compare. Anyways, that's all for today folks. Bye for now.